Right, hello, welcome back to another little uh, material tutorial uh, in Unreal Engine. Uh, today we're going to be talking about flow maps, uh, what they are, how they work, uh, how we can use them, how we can use vertex colors to approx well, to make a very quick version of them uh, in Engine. Um, and yeah, should be good, should be interesting. Let's get started. So before we start to about, talk about flow maps and what they are, uh, let's talk a little bit about water. So this is a very simple water material. Um, and the key to a water material is simply this. It's just taking normal maps, um, in this case, very subtle, kind of watery, uneven surface, water normal, um, and just scrolling them. So panning them, this one's moving up to the top right, this one to the top uh, bottom left, uh, and combining those two. So in this case, I've just added them together. Not necessarily the best way to do it, but in this case, it works. Um, and you get this sort of wavy, ripply motion um, that works surprisingly well for just basically two normal maps or the same normal map uh, added together with itself and moving across. Um, this is great if you have something like this where the two vectors of how they're moving are against each other you get what looks a bit like standing water. Um, if I was going here change my speed in Y to a positive 0.25 now they're both moving in the same direction but also across each other so I get a little bit of direction of flow um, this one's coming in and affecting it, but obviously the panners are giving you a bit of a directionality, and you can build your mesh and have that go round as long as it's flowing along the UVs. This is all going to be fine. Uh, but what happens if we put an object in the middle, a rock or something for this to uh, to interact with? Um, it's not going to flow around, is it? It's not going to dynamically do that. So we have this concept of a flow map. Uh, what does that do? Well, we just go over to Google, do a quick Google image search for flow maps. We get something like this. Um, this is an example of a flow map. Uh, basically, whenever you see this kind of colored data, this sort of red and green and yellows, um, you should be thinking that's 2D data. Uh, UVs, like a UV square, that's 2D data. Flow maps, it's 2D data. It's showing it how to move around the object. Um, we'll talk about how to generate these a bit later, um, but hopefully that makes sense. And if we have a look at this image here, we can see Anything that's painted full, full red and full, full green is going to move up to the top right. Anything black, zero, zero, is going to move to the bottom left. And anything with these mid colors, um, it's going to look like it's, it's not moving at all. So by creating a, a map like this, you can see that you're going to get the sort of water flowing around these objects. Uh, and it's using these directions to do that flow. So um, hopefully that makes sense. We'll get to Unreal. I'm going to build a material that sort of shows how that works. So, just going to close you, create an example, duplicate that, flow map example. Um, you open this up. So, I'm just going to take all of this normal information. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of it. We're just going to start from scratch. Um, yeah, that's fine. I can just stay there for now. Um, so, to start with, I'm going to bring in my UVs. I know that I'm dealing with UVs because I'm doing a flow map. Uh, I'm going to bring in this texture. Ooh, that's not texture. Um, which is the distortion. Um, and this is just a very simple... I've just taken a UV map and swelled it in Photoshop. Um, it's pretty heavy distortion, but hopefully it'll give you an example of uh, how this works. Um, so it may not be the best looking result, but it'll be uh, clear what it's doing. Um, so if I just take my UVs and I add my distortion and now I only want to add the red and green channel. We're only dealing with red green data here, it's only two color data. Um, add that and then I'm going to use not a normal map for now but this UV map test texture. Be able to see very clearly uh, this is all distorted. So um, I want to apply it and preview it on my shader and a little tip here, rather than going in and unpinning all these things, if I just turn on Use Material Attributes, it condenses it down to one pin, and I can make Material Attributes. I can preview that nicely my my sphere and in my world. But if I turn off Make Material Attributes or Use Material Attributes, I haven't lost any of those original connections. So you can kind of hide a preview inside a material just by using the use material attributes button. Um, it's quite useful to do for things like landscapes and blending materials so maybe you're already using it 
in which case you can just turn it off and have your preview hidden there. Um, nice little tip. So, turn it on, have a look at my preview. There we are, you can see I have a very heavily distorted V uh, texture. So, I want some control, I don't want it to be that heavily distorted. So if I multiply it by a value, I'm just going to make a scalar parameter. I call this distortion. Um, multiplying by zero, that does nothing. Adding that on makes no difference, has no change at all. Uh, and if I do a little bit of distortion, start seeing that swirling effect happening. To five, more and more swirling, more and more distortion. Um, this parameter. Effectively what I'm doing here is I'm previewing what time would look like. Uh, this is going to be uh, replaced. Um, in fact, if I just plug time in, what happens? It goes completely nonsense. Because it's getting more and more distorted, isn't it? Every time this value goes up, time goes up, and it goes up pretty quick because this is counted in seconds. If I start putting this up to like 4, well, this whole text is completely distorted beyond any kind of recognition. Um, so what I need to do is make it reset every so often. It's going to distort and then after a while it's going to go oh, and pop back to being undistorted. And the way we do that is with a frac. So frac is a mathematical term or mathematical function, action, whatever you want to call it. Um, and what it does is it just ignores the full integer value and just only takes the floating point data. So the frac of 4.4 Four seven eight, which is what I've got in here, is four seven eight. Um, this completely ignores that. If I put a whole number in, rack of four is zero because four is actually four point zero. Um, so now, if I put time in and preview that, you'll see that it'll flick forwards and then it'll reset every so often. Um, pretty cool. Starting to give build up maybe a bit of a, an idea of how this flow map's working. Um, that pop is very obvious, isn't it? It's a very heavy, distorted uh, texture here we're using, but there's a very obvious pop when this happens. So, so what can we do about that? Well, there's a little trick we can do. If we take our time or our parameter, um, let's use time. Time's good. Um, if we add 0 0.5, and then frack that, we could do the exact same setup. Say multiply by the same original distortion add the original V make another sample plug that one in you can see we've got two textures that are both popping and resetting but they're offset in time by half a cycle aren't they? because um, frac is taking the fractional bit and add 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is offsetting it halfway through so that's kind of like working um, like that. So if we put that into the emissive colour so we can preview both at the same time. Well, that's just made it worse, hasn't it? We're just popping twice as often now, because one of them's pops, and then one of them's offset and pops. But here's where the magic happens. We can blend between them. And so at no point are we ever going to see the pop because of the blend. So what's the timing for this? Well, actually, if we take our time, take the cosine of it, Cosine just a trig function, blends from 1 to minus 1. Well, we don't want to blend from 1 to minus 1, we want to blend from 1 to 0. All we want to do is take our, our kind of cosine um, and remap it. So uh, there is a node in Unreal that does that, it's called constant bias scale. All that is is a multiply and an add together in one single node. You can use that, it's fine. I prefer generally to do it manually. You can't see the numbers inside that, that node, so it's kind of like a bit of a black box. Um, so got 1 and minus 1, so if we first of all add 1, here's a little thing I like to do when I'm dealing with value ranges, just to make sure that I'm always doing the right thing, it's just put a note above it that tells you what the value range you're dealing with is. So in this case now I've added 1, so I've got a range that's going from 0 to 2. Now how do I get from 0 to 2 to 0 to 1? I divide by 2. Now 0 to 1. That the same. So uh, just remap that cosine range from minus 1 to 1 into 0 to 1. And like I say, you could also just stick a constant bias scale in there and that'll do the same thing. So bias, add 1, scale. Okay, it's multiplied by 0.5, but I've divided by 2, but it's basically the same. So now when I stick this in here, 
should not. Not. <laughs> okay, welcome back. Found a mistake. Just pause the video quickly there to do some debugging. Uh, what have I done? I've added my UVs that I've already distorted back into my other UVs that are distorted. This should be added to here. Find these a bit better. Makes a lot of sense. You're dealing with shaders that things happen in parallel. It's to put all the nodes in parallel. That way you can see when you make stupid mistakes like I just did. Uh, okay. So, now the magic does happen. Uh, um, and we're getting that distortion and that blend happening. And although these two samples are popping here, you can see that because we're blending between them, if I just open, um, we're never seeing that distortion. And like I say, this is actually a pretty heavily distorted uh, sample. So, but hopefully, despite the small technical issues, um, that explains how um, a flow map works. Uh, and if we open up the example that the engine comes with, is a flow map material function which we'll be using. Um, if I open this up, quick, um, it's a little bit of a mess with spaghetti, um, but if we dig in here we can see sample one, sample two, that's the two texture samples, and obviously they're dealing with normal and diffuse at the same time, so there's a bit more complexity here. Um, and then here we have our frac and our offset by 0.5, another frac here for time and things. So it's doing the same thing. Uh, and then LERP, uh, the blending between them. So, uh, like I say, a bit more complexity in here. Um, and if you have a look, they're actually using a linear sign rather than the cosine wave I was using. Um, if I just add zero to this output so that I can preview it in the editor, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, they added a bit of noise to their sine wave so that basically, rather than whole, the whole texture blending at the same time, um, they've added a bit of extra noise within that and actually that's something we'll do manually uh, in our in our flow map material in a bit so uh, get rid of that get rid of this hopefully that makes sense and explains how flow maps work um, pretty cool pretty powerful like I say if you've got a nice baked distortion you'll get some nice uh, results around that let's go back to my example so let's build it up in our own shader uh, and bring in some vertex colors so we can paint this direction of flow. So all I'm going to do is use not diffuse, it is use normal. Create a texture object here for my water normal. And then I'm going to do a um, vertex color. Oh, that's vector, do vertex color. I'm just going to mask out red and green, plug that into my flow map, and yeah, for now, let's try this and see what we get. Plug that into our normal. Get our UVs or our normal scrolling along our object. Uh, if I just apply, apply this to a test plane in the world, it is um, quite nice gives us a nice sort of flowing direction. Uh, it's up to the top right, isn't it? Um, why is that? Well, if we have a look by default, I go into my RGB channels, every object in Unreal, when it, you bring it in, has white vertex colors. So remember back at our direction texture, white is actually this color because we're ignoring blue. Um, so we're getting this yellow, which is, means move up to the top right. Well, that's great. If I come in here and if I paint, oops, I paint a black color down here, so I've got a nice black square in the corner. Tidy. Um, I'll go back to look at how this looks. You can see this water is not moving. This water is moving. There's a quite a bit of smearing, obviously, between those two. We're using very extreme values, and we'll scale this down in a bit. Um, but for now, we can see that's working, isn't it? It's moving that way. And if I painted exactly red and nothing in green, and did that here see this stuff scrolling this way. So very quickly um, we've created a bit of directional flow with the vertex paint. 
uh, which is quite nice. It's quite a powerful thing to do. I can't make anything glow the other way, can I? Um, black's as low as I can paint with this, I believe. I don't think I can go in here and paint minus one. No, it doesn't like that. Um, so if we just go back to painting this black over here, what can we do to get that things to go the negative value? Well, in the same way we unpacked our range here to go from minus one to one to zero to one, we can sort of just do the opposite, right? Here, the range of our values is currently zero to one. If I basically do the opposite of the operations I did earlier, so if I first subtract 0.5, going to have negative numbers, aren't I? So there we are. Range here is going to be minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 and then keep it nice and um, kind of unified. If I multiply that by 2, my range is now going to be from minus 1 to 1. Uh, and I could use a constant bias scale again. The only difference here is I'd have to change these values. I don't want my bias that wants to now be 1, 0 0.5 and to 0 0.5 minus 0.5 to you can see here, although this node and this node look exactly the same from the outside, they're doing completely opposite things. So that's kind of why I don't like using them. Um, I'd much rather do that so I can see what's going on. So now, if I press in and apply, see this stuff black going that way, this stuff going the other way. Um, and you can see, like I say, there's quite a bit of distortion in this. Um, but like I say also, it's quite high values. If I just multiply these, obviously I could go in and paint much lower values. I've painted the extremes at this point. Um, and if I go in here and I paint 0 0.45, 0 0.65 or something like that, middle, it's got a little bit of flow to it. But anywhere you've got this like large transition between values, you're going to get this, this smearing. But I can also just multiply by an intensity. I do this, flow map, intensity. that one there. So if we just default that to zero for now, hopefully nothing will move. That's what we'd expect. And nothing does. I just plug in a little value, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 maybe. We're getting that directionality that we painted. But we're not getting those horrible smears that we were before. Um, so yeah, paint it with your full range and then just scale it down or paint it nice and subtly up to you. Obviously the values are the same mathematically at the end. Um, and yeah, there it is. A vertex painted flow map. It can be a bit fiddly. Obviously there's no uh, like, it's not a great tool for doing this. Um, but it does give you access to that if you wish. Um, small scenes or little bits. Uh, this is obviously where baking things from another piece of software um, comes in handy. Um, so, last thing with this kind of, of flow map, uh, I mentioned it before, if we have a look, see all this stuff that's moving the same direction, it's kind of in sync, isn't it? The whole thing's pulsing at the same time. There's a little bit of, of uh, kind of texture work or distortion to break that up in here. But if we have a look here, see so under time, it says tooltip, see tooltip, um, adding a large scale noise map to time will help offset any tiling artifacts. So let's do that. Um, so I'm going to take the world position, it's going to mask out the red and green channels and divide by large value. I'm going to call this noise tiling. So anytime you're using world position, these are in centimeters, these are unreal units, these get very big very quickly. So I just want to divide by a nice big texture, oops, nice big value, not a texture. Uh, and I'm going to use them as my UVs for a texture group. So I do this and I'm just going to use a nice clouds noise. Um, and effectively all I've done here, by using the red and green uh, channels of the world position, I come out of game mode, red and green, I've mapped a texture in world space. And if I turn on my preview, put that guy in to say save. see our texture mapped in world space and if I move this around texture is unique to that world 
and not to the object. Uh, it's a really useful technique. Use it all the time for um, well, sorts of stuff, but terrain and, and water, those kind of shaders, it's great because you don't have to worry about the UVs of the object you've made. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. So now, if I change my tiling here, see, probably want something that's quite quite big. I want a bit of subtle variation across my across my water. And if I plug that into time, I can just go back to my shader. What's going to happen is the bits that are dark in that cloud are going to be offset in time from the bits that are light in the clouds. Oh, I haven't actually added time. Nope, didn't it? Time, add that value to time. There you go. Now it'll animate. There we are. Um, I don't know how easy that is to see, but if I scrub this value, see, if I put it too low, we're getting a lot of high detail distortion. Doesn't really work. And if we put it too high, it's not having an effect at all, and this is all in sync, in time, and you're getting that kind of rhythmic pulsing. But somewhere in the middle, there's kind of a sweet spot. See, it's starting to affect things. It shows up in the video. You kind of see now on that top edge, especially, a bit more of a breakup in that kind of timing of that, that flow map distortion. So, so yeah, so that's flow maps. Um, I so say I'm not going to go into how to generate them in this video. Uh, there's lots of information on how you can do that in Houdini. Uh, there's a, a standalone pro program called Flow Map Painter that you can paint them. Uh, you can paint them in Photoshop. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to do another video. I've just been working on a tool on using Unreal's physics engine. Um, and that spawns little physics objects that f move around and paint a flow map as they do. Um, and it works quite well. So if you're interested, check that video out. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you learned something about flow maps and how you can just use them quite simply, even with this vertex colors, to create some nice uh, motion in your, your fluids and waters and stuff. So uh, as always, any questions, give me an email. Uh, I will endeavor to get back to you. Or if you have any uh, questions for future tutorial things, let me know. Um, and yeah, I hope that was informative and enjoyable. So.